Hello, welcome to part three of this four part series of Starter Stroke gift sets. We've had part one and part two, they should be somewhere above me, or at least one of them will be somewhere above me. There's a little um, playlist, I can think of the word then, a little playlist of these as well. But if you're watching this when this comes out, then excellent, stay tuned next week for the conclusion, a little review, and of course part four. For those of you that are new here, these videos cover all aspects of the kit, so an unboxing, a building, and then a score system. Um, they're all scored against the same criteria, and they all must fulfill the same basic rules, which will appear on screen now. For this one, I actually purchased this kit in Hobbycraft. I have bought all of these kits from somewhere slightly different. I tend not to go in Hobbycraft. Uh, nothing against the shop at all. In fact, this experience has been beneficial to me. I will probably go in there more often. It's just that there are other places available. It's a little bit out of my way to go to Hobbycraft, so uh, normally I thought I'd have a look, see what they had in there. I saw this and went, you know what? That fits the criteria perfectly. If you've enjoyed this content, please hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, notification bell, whatever you can do to help, but ultimately just watching the video if you like it and letting me know in the comments is really, really helpful. Um, let's see how far we get with kit number three. Today we are looking at the 172nd F4U4 Corsair from Revell. This is sold as a model set, three paints. I said two brushes, but it's actually one, it's just uh, double-ended. And contactor cement. This is the largest of the kits we've looked at so far, with a whopping 65 parts. Interesting to note that Ravel are putting this as a skill level 3, that is based entirely on the number of parts rather than any actual skill level, although in this uh, case I feel it does actually benefit because I'm comparing it with starter sets. This isn't really a starter set as you will see as you go along. Either way, this is the newer style of Ravel branding, the lovely black artwork. It says here 2016, which is when this particular version was released, although the internet says that this was 2014 that this tool was actually first produced. And on the back we have a little bit of advice for the colours that are uh, provided, the aqua colour, as well as lots and lots of angry warnings. Moving on to what we actually get in the box. The paintbrush, as I say, is double-ended. The red side is smaller and uh, kind of round-tipped, and the blue side is bigger and is quite flat-tipped. So interesting variety that they give you there. Contactor Cement, anyone on my channel has seen me use before anyway. It is my standard poly cement of choice. You have this fine application needle, makes it very, very easy to use. And then three colours, which are in these lovely little parts. We have white, we have anthracite grey, and then we have a Lufthansa blue, which I would have thought maybe US Navy glossy blue would make more sense. But hey, if they think Lufthansa blue will look right, then, well, we're going to find out, aren't we? Taking a look inside the box, we notice that everything is sealed in this uh, clear plastic bag and the instructions are separately. These are the later style of Ravel instructions. They are very, very colourful, which I, I think helps, certainly if you're selling to people that don't usually make scale models. Uh, oh, and inside there you have this smaller booklet, which also includes the decals. I do feel that this is maybe a bad idea. It kind of keeps them safe, but if you don't know they're there, you could easily just kind of throw the paper to one side and... Uh, yeah, damage these. Anyway, they look very nice. We'll see them properly, but uh, note the seat belts on there. This, as I have said once before, this is more complicated than just a starter set. Warnings on this big piece of paper. Do not drink. Do not insert into orifices you should not insert. All the usual sort of stuff. Uh, don't set fire to the cement. Anyway, these instructions give you this wonderful selection of uh, hints and tips and advice, including telling you what sort of tools to uh, expect to need, and advice on test fitting, where to apply cement, and a little way around using the paint as well. It gives you the, uh, the tins, the enamel tins, as a, as a diagram example, but... Uh, Never mind. Uh, it does also tell you what the symbols and such mean over on the right hand side in multiple languages. Maybe not the clearest thing to read, however, uh, that's mostly because I only know one language, I guess. Uh, if I could read all of those languages, it would immediately jump out to me, maybe. Uh, not sure. Obviously, they're trying to appeal to everyone. Uh, Ravel are an international company, after all. Going further into the pages, we get uh, even more non-kit building stuff. It's got more symbols, more warnings telling you what to use and what not to use. And then finally, we get to the paints that you are expected to need. It says here, required 
to make the model and there's quite a few of them don't forget we did only have three supplied with the kit and one of them there C is actually a mixture of two colors it does tell you at least how to mix those colors but um, color C is an interior green so it's kind of a, a yellow and green mix you would have thought by now that Ravel could possibly have made a colour to replicate an interior green because it seems that every kit they make they tell you to mix one but uh, anyway look at all of these these are the colours they give you and uh, yeah straight away we're going to see that maybe they've given you an, uh, a slightly unusual choice we have a sprue map on the next page and uh, a very very helpful and it even has this little bit about spare parts or what to do should there be a problem the instructions look wonderful. They're, like I said, they're in full colour. They seem to make it very clear. They don't just condense loads of things onto one um, section, one step. They space it out quite nicely. They tell you which bits to paint along the way. And we're going to be following this mostly. I say mostly. This one is one where I broke tradition a little bit. Um, but generally speaking, we are going to follow it. And right at the end, the very last page, is the colour callout. But it is fully in colour and it does show you the decal placement as well. So I can't really complain. It is nice and clear. It is nice and simple. Uh, well, I mean, we're, we're going to find out, aren't we? But I think it is. Well, notice there is a random H um, on, the, on the side there, which is the yellow for the propeller blade tips. Anyway, moving on to the plastic itself. Straight away, I have seen this 2014 copyright stamp with Ravel on it on the inside wing. Don't worry, that is the inside wing. It's not going to be visible once the kit is made. But the detail looks absolutely fine. This doesn't really look like a starter set to me. Looking at it through the box, it just looks like a standard Ravel release, which, of course, it is. They've just chosen one which is, I think, simple to finish. I'm not going to say simple to make because... Uh, my experience of Ravel is that generally their newer stuff is quite simple to make. Yes, it may have a lot of parts, but they're still quite easy. Um, but they've gone for one which only really requires one body colour. Anyway, um, again, going on to the detail, it looks absolutely fine. You've got these shallow panel lines, you've got this nice wing detail, and the uh, pistons on the engine look absolutely fine as well. Everything looks really good, really crisp. There is little to no flash. Uh, and then on to the clear parts, there are just two, which is windscreen front and the canopy itself. There is a little bit of flash here, but they look fine. I mean, the flash doesn't get in the way, it's just at the, the, the front, uh, the, the joining bit, the gates. There we go, got the word in the end. Uh, but again, they look fine, they look nice and clear. And I did note the instructions give you an option to do it open and closed, but no pilot. Construction begins by looking confused at the selection of paints and then step one telling you that everything needs to be interior green uh, and there's some silver on there as well. I mean, I, I kind of get why they've done it, especially if they don't make an interior green, but it is a little bit annoying. Anyway, all parts are cut with the side cutters and si uh, sanded, siled? I was, I was trying to combine both. They're either siled, fanded, <laughs> filed or sanded down with a file. Uh, some of them were tied it up with a little bit of sandpaper as well. Uh, I think there's only like the wings uh, and that's much, much later in construction. But all of the parts are going to be cut off using just these uh, tools, just the one craft knife, the side cutters, the single file. Uh, all of the gluing is done using the contactor cement supplied. All of the painting is done with the paintbrush supplied. Just thought I'd get that out of the way. As is standard for one of my videos, I'm not going to be telling you every single piece that I'm gluing together, and I don't intend to show that. However, even within this series, this one is a lot more in depth. As you saw at the beginning, it's advertised as a model set. It is very much a standard Ravel release that they've just chucked some paints, a brush and some cement in to try and make it a little bit more appealing. The kit on its own usually retails around the nine or ten pound mark. You're not adding a huge amount by supplying it with paints and cement and of course the brush. I think overall it is a pretty good deal. With the interior comprised of mostly two modules, a seat one and an instrument panel one, it is time to paint. Uh, naturally, of course, I am not mixing together two paints that they do not supply. That is ridiculous. I am going to be using my standard Hataka interior green for US aircraft. Um, it's still going to be brush painted with the 
supplied paintbrush. However, it would be nice if people thought about supplying uh, a green with their starter sets, especially when it's such an important colour for this aircraft. The, the black, blue and green I think would have made more sense. We'll see what the white's used for later on, but it does just seem a little odd. The green is actually applied as per the instructions. It tells you where specifically to paint because they're colour instructions. So it tells you that this bit, the uh, rear wheel and arrestor hook bay you can see that it's got some details it, it tells you where you can paint I would have actually painted the entire fuselage but hey I'm following the instructions uh, the first of the aqua color paint supplied is now tested this is the anthracite grey uh, a little bit stiff to open and I did end up with some paint on my thumb but this is used instead of black so it's a very 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 dark grey uh, basically black and it is used in place of anywhere you'd expect a black or very 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 dark gray to be applied so the instrument panel for example and the uh, tip of the control column i did find that the paintbrush is actually a little bit uh, i want to say thin but it's not really thin it's it's too soft it's too easy to just bend and it doesn't uh, i i, I don't want to have a go at a paintbrush because I'll seem like a weirdo uh, yelling at a paintbrush. It does the job it paints. I personally would prefer something a little bit firmer, something a bit stiffer so that I can actually paint those details. But does it do the job? Well, definitely, so I should probably just stop moaning. So this is actually the first point where I've started kind of diverting from the instructions a little bit, not in any significant way, simply the green and anthracite grey needed time to dry and I had time to carry on with a model so I carried on with a model uh, and assembled the wings. So Vallejo Leather Brown 70.871 is applied in a tiny quantity just to the headrest. It was in the instructions that this is a colour that you should use but they don't supply it and well ultimately this has to spend time sitting on my shelf I would like it to at least look quite presentable and since it's such a, a tiny thing to add and the instructions did mention it I did however none of the instructions none of the instructions none of the interior was given a wash anyway onto the decals there are four that go on the inside you've got left and right module that I'm cutting out here with some household scissors there's also two on the front instrument panel being the main instrument panel and then a sort of section underneath it the instructions do tell you how to apply decals they give you an estimated time for dunking the uh, tra transfer itself in water for and just tells you to do exactly this just place it and then dry it i personally use an old handkerchief as a way of drying the decal when it is done but uh, you could use cotton buds you could use all sorts of things by far the fiddliest bit of the kit as a whole is the seat belt transfers personally if i were a starter i would not have bothered with these and i guess if you were a true starter it would be nice for you to be able to skip lots of these steps i mean that you're not you're not forced to make it are you but if you are like me and you're a more experienced builder and you're revisiting this hobby or revisiting uh, this kit or it was given as a gift because somebody knows that you like planes or whatever then you at least have the full functionality to make a more detailed model of it so whilst this is very indicative of not being a true starter set. I do quite like the fact that there's nothing here which is complicated and there's nothing here which is crucial that you can't just miss if you are a beginner. However, that said, there are some fiddly bits of assembly for this and sticking the cockpit in was one. Thankfully, the saving grace for the kit is being supplied with a decent cement. I cannot stress enough how good it is to see contactor being used in its normal form like with a precision needle just a precision glue being applied in a kit if this is going to be your first experience of model making or your first experience when revisiting it then having a decent cement is absolutely bloody vital quite frankly oh dear anyway it's like um contact to love aside whilst the kit is nicely tooled whilst the detail is nice there was just the occasional ridge and the uh, joint of the wings or fuselage so i just scraped that down with a knife and we really start getting to the point where the kit just kind of falls together take note of the separate wingtips that are being fitted there are other instances along here where there are clearly different versions catered for by the tooling 
I will get back to that point shortly, uh, but right away we're going to go back to the instructions where you have my favourite symbol. It is this one here, part next to um, the, the timer. It's got this little Cyclops reading a book, says look at part 13, and you look at part 13 and go, yep, okay, that's a further step of construction. Um, and it also tells you to paint the inside blue, and then you immediately stick the engine over the bit that you've painted blue. So I have absolutely no idea why they're telling you to waste your time and paint blue on the inside of the cowling. You physically cannot see it. I've checked. Uh, obviously I've made it now so I can check anyway. But very, very strange. Um, the engine was painted in the anthracite grey and I actually went over it with a little mix of silver and black just to give a more metallic sheen before the fiddly component which is assembling the various stages of the engine. So this is what I mean when I was saying earlier that there's examples of different variations of the tooling. There are things like the wingtips, the uh, the engine, cowling, various things have been done so that you can clearly make a multitude of different Corsairs using the same base tooling as and when necessary. Whilst that is very indicative of a standard kit, obviously they're going to want to make the most of the tooling that they've wasted, to, uh, wasted? <coughs> spent their money on. However, as a starter set, that is perhaps not the best route to go. Airfix very much just have a here is what you are making done and they'll just churn out that same kit forever whereas Hella were very much a here is an old kit make what you can out of it type of thing whereas here Ravel are using a new tool however it's still maybe a little difficult for beginners. Lufthansa Blue is needed for the interior of the engine cowling as you saw there. It's also used in other places. We Well, well I mean, obviously it's the main colour of the aircraft, but I mean it's used in other interior places which we'll get to soon. This is the first time that I've opened it, I've stirred it, I haven't thinned it or anything, and you know what? It's, it's not a bad paint. It actually goes on rather well. Um, yeah, very impressed. Here's the Tamiya Silver that I had previously used mixed with the black that I alluded to but I did not specifically show you. Uh, but that is painted on the Arrester gear as instructed. By far the fiddliest bit of construction on the external side of the aircraft was the engine cowling piece. I did not find it particularly intuitive. Uh, don't forget, I've been doing this for years. I, I kind of can work my way around it, but I would love to have used some filler and sanded it down a, a little bit more. It just didn't quite fit within the space, in my experience. Right, now it's rant time. Whilst I have said these instructions are good, they are not consistent. Look here, this is the well for the rear tail wheel. Uh, obviously it's a tail wheel, it's rear. Uh, and arrested gear. It showed you in parts 4 and 5 to paint it C, interior green. So that's what I did. And then it tells you, like the underneath here, to paint it K, which is the Lufthansa blue. So it's wasted my time and my attacker green painting the interior of the wheel well green. What's it supposed to be, huh? idiots. Right, anyway, the third and final of the Aquacolor uh, supplied paint is the white. The white is only really used for the undercarriage legs on the, the main undercarriage, not even the tail wheel. So they've given you white and you use hardly any of it, but hey, the paint itself, again, like the other two, absolutely fine. And even with the rather clumsy brush, I was able to paint the wheels all right. Uh, also, not maybe instinctive for beginners or starter kits is they supply all of the undercarriage legs as one piece and you have to cut them in half that is both the tail wheels uh, tail wheels the tail as you see here that i'm applying but that was also true of the main undercarriage legs uh why can't they just make two of them um maybe they're just not consistent enough it could be that they intend the kit to be made with undercarriage up as an option but guess what that's never actually mentioned at all in the instructions so it doesn't mention doing the wheels up it doesn't give you a pilot but it does give you the added faff of having to cut the pieces in half so yeah overall not ideal once again i think the best side of this rather inconsistent way of um, providing a kit is at least it does tell you in the instructions how to do this it does give you the advice and they do at least mold it so that you can very clearly see where the divide is so it's not ideal, but, you know, it could be worse. Anyway, look, the Corsair just sat on its wheels for the first time. 
there are two drop tanks included there are also a couple of bombs it does not give you an option for the bombs uh, i don't really know why i don't really care why to be honest it just they, they give you a free bomb uh, enjoy uh, but the drop tanks go on really easily as does the radio antenna spoilers i knocked that off very quickly and the pitot tube spoilers i knocked that off and i have no idea where it went so uh, that's gone forever so enjoy that shot of it because that's it you won't see it again Whilst the kit is now being painted, which is using the flat side of the double-ended brush, which is actually much, much nicer, especially for larger areas, uh, and giving you a brush that can do both large and small areas, really, really good. But I do feel like I should mention, I did not wash the sprues. I haven't washed the sprues in any of these three kits, even though all of them have said you might want to wash it in soapy water. The reason for that is I've been doing this hobby now for, what, nearly two decades, and I can think of only one kit where I've really needed to wash the sprues and one where I just felt like it. So it's not something which I've ever really had a problem with. I do admittedly normally spray everything with a primer, and that kind of negates a lot of the issues that you'd get with dirty sprues, but um, yeah, I didn't, and that is why maybe I should have done interesting. Anyway, gloss varnish, 70.510. All three of the kits that I've made thus far have been painted with this same varnish, so it's yes, it's not included, and it's an extra step. However, it is consistent with the entire series. This is for my own preference, my own sanity, uh, and also it gives a consistent background, as in all three of the kits have a consistent background with which to apply the decals. I feel that makes it a little bit fairer. Um, Honestly, with the Aquacolor paint, I don't think I would have had a problem with not doing it. Much like the other elements of this kit, you get considerably more by way of decals than you do with the Airfix or Hella kits that I've already made in the series. Uh, however, you don't get full stencil detail, so it's not quite that bad. They're not exactly expecting you to spend two hours putting tiny no-walk signs on it. Uh, the most complicated ones to apply are these fuselage bands, which are shaped to wrap around the fuselage and... Yeah, full credit to Ravel. They are perfect. They they fit nicely. Uh, I always join them at the top, and I don't worry if they're exactly joined at the bottom because I display them, funnily enough, on their wheels. Um, they've given you a tiny little indent on the rear of the fuselage band, which goes around the tail, and as such, they were absolutely fine. With the entire aircraft given a coat of, of the Vallejo satin varnish, which I didn't show on screen for some reason, the canopy can then be applied. Now it is a two-piece canopy and it does give you the option for it to be open, however I opted to have it closed. If I were making this kit with a fully detailed interior rather than a kind of semi-bodged, doing it as close as I can to start a set whilst also enjoying it kind of interior, I probably would have done it open. It is good enough, I think, to be displayed open. Um, but either way, the canopy was glued in place, tiny ridge between the windscreen and the main canopy body, but easy enough to paint even with the somewhat large soft paintbrush however the windscreen itself had incredibly faint panel lines at, in my opinion far too faint and i just I, i'm not entirely sure if i painted where they are uh, correctly i just went with what i felt looked about right and what matched the pictures in the instructions but um yeah could have been better could have been much more visible and much more raised and just generally easier or could have molded it in one piece which would be easier for a beginner uh, the last non-standard color is the tamiya flat yellow this i i don't think you'd actually really have much of a problem with not doing it but the propeller blade tips in my opinion should always be yellow if they are meant to be yellow and therefore i did it I now present you with the end result, the finished Corsair 170 second scale by Ravel. And to say that this has been made with the Aquacolor paints and the brush supplied, ah, oh, honestly, I am super impressed with the end result. Um, obviously it can look better and realistically, I'm going to go out and buy another version of this tooling and just make it as as a non-starter set you just make it as normal because it is beautifully engineered it is genuinely a delight i i have a uh, suspicion i haven't looked this up yet but i have a suspicion there are a few historical inaccuracies with it uh, i won't spoil that now i will wait until i've actually done my research and then go from there but that is another thought for another time for now we need to go over the scores so using the same criteria as the last two kits we have 
the following. Ease of build, I'm giving this 4 out of 5. It loses a point because of the fact that it's clearly not a starter set. It does take a little bit of fighting in some places. Uh, the interior, uh, that where the instrument panel is, that bulkhead does not have a particularly good uh, locating pin. It, you just kind of rest it on a, on a bar and it can slide around. So I chose to glue it a little bit later than it otherwise um, would have been suggested in the instructions just uh, from experience so I did have to kind of break my own rule a little bit there and other things like the uh, the way the undercarriage goes together it, it's it's fine it's fine if you're an experienced modeler it's really easy if you're an experienced modeler but if, the, if this is one of your early experiences of kit building mm, may not be ideal completeness also gets a four it's losing a point because of the sheer number of paints that it suggests you need however it of course only supplies you with three Quality is four and a half. Now, quality is calculated over multiple different things. So each of the paints gets a score, the cement, the kit, and the brush. And in this case, all paints get five out of five. The brush gets four out of five. The cement gets five out of five, and the kit gets five out of five. Um, the paints are fantastic. They are the best paints I have ever seen in a starter set. I don't even like Aquacolor, but when I've just been dealing with the horrible monstrosities that Humbro and uh, Hella provide, these things are an absolute joy. The only reason why the brush loses one is because, as I've said before, it was a little bit soft, and sometimes I just felt that it was fighting against me rather than helping me presentation is four and it only loses that fifth because of the uh, instructions being inconsistent and suggesting you paint something one color and then going over it and painting it another color um, not ideal could have been a little bit better but actually the quality of the uh, the instructions the color the vividness and the fact that they've not just tried to condense it into one sheet really really good and then the more subjective one which is enjoyment i've given this a four and a half i thoroughly enjoyed this it was really really good the only reason why it's losing a half and is not just a full five is because uh, i'm trying to pretend that i'm not an experienced modeler and i think i would have struggled a little bit with some of the finer details so maybe a little bit harsh um but i will absolutely be buying this one again. So when all of that is plugged into the spreadsheet of final score calculatoriness, that gives the F4U4 Corsair from Ravel a whopping 8.4 out of 10. And when we then plug that into the final scoreboard, the tally for so far in this competition, that puts it very, very hot on the heels of Airfix with their Sherman Firefly. In fact, uh, I'm just going to quickly do the maths. And yes, had I given that a 5 for enjoyment, that would have tied an 8.6 with Airfix. However, the real victim here is um, Airfix would have easily smashed this if they just made better paints. I know Ravel get a bit of shtick in the community for being a bit of a randomizer. They will rebox any old shit and just pretend it's new. But here, they've actually done a, a very decent kit. They've gone for paints that can and are sold in their own right uh, the cement is kind of a modeling standard now they've got all of the tools and i think this looks as good as it does because the paint is as good as it is bearing in mind that revel aquacolor is not exactly the best paint out there but compare this with the hella paint which is kind of like household emulsion just slapped over a little car or airfix paint which or, which is I mean, it's from humble but you know with supplied with airfix which might be solid and thus completely unusable well, this is going to be more beneficial to my experience as a beginner or uh, an inexperienced modeler than anything else. So I think the decent cement and the decent paint, coupled with, in this case, a really decent kit, it's, it's perfect. This is exactly what I want to see uh, in, in shops promoting the hobby. One final point, I know based on what I've even acknowledged myself that Ravel can sometimes uh, just regurgitate old crap and put that in a box. I genuinely did not know that this was a 2014 tool when I bought it. I bought the kit first and was half expecting it to be garbage but with okay paints. So just thought I'd throw that in. Unless you have been horrifically offended by me suggesting that Ravel are actually not a bad company and definitely have a place in the starter market, you could look at becoming a channel member to support the channel directly. I'm very much appreciative of those that do. Um, 
don't feel you have to but i just thought i'd mention that it is an option if you like otherwise you could just like hit the notification bell or subscribe if you haven't already but watching this video is very helpful to the channel i very much appreciate you and hopefully i will see you again in another week when we will have the fourth and final installment of this little series so thank you very much for watching and goodbye